This is Russ Anderson. In this simplified tutorial, I'm going to show a 360 VR export to the After Effects 3D environment, where we're just doing the more usual planar insertions in After Effects, for example, screen and logo insertions. This is simpler since Cinema 4D is involved. So we're going to start from roughly the same solved scene as the full Cinema 4D and After Effects tutorial. I picked out a few trackers here indicated in blue that we're going to export to After Effects as well as some planes. Now, you folks could probably do what I'm about to do in After Effects directly. I'm not super adept at the 3D environment, so I'm going to show how to do the setup in Synthize and in fact in two different ways. So we'll start out by making a plane here in the front view. And I'm going to run the script set plane aspect ratio, which just is going to make it a 2 to 1 mesh, which matches the image that I'm going to put on it. So let's bring that texture up, we'll set it, and we'll switch to the quad perspective view. So now you see a rather suspicious looking individual down there. Next we're going to turn on the edit pivot mode. And I'm just moving the pivot to the toe. So that's going to be the location that's going to match up with the actual tracker location ultimately. I just want to turn the edit pivots back off. And be sure to do that. Now let's go to the 3D view. We need to adjust the size of our insert to something plausible. This is arbitrary. You can do some coordinate system setup and do this more intelligently, but we're just kind of winging it there. We've got our size set up and now we're ready to start with the trackers. So I'm going to select one of them then use the edit select same color to select all of those blue trackers. Next we'll run duplicate mesh onto all of those trackers. So now you see a bunch of those meshes there. While we're at it here in the 3D panel, we'll invert the selection and turn off the exportable checkbox for all those other trackers. So we're only going to be exporting the bunch of blue ones. We'll also take the original mesh here and just take that out. One last thing to do here inside of Synthize before we're ready to export is to take each of these and we'll rotate them to roughly be facing in towards the middle where the camera is. So we can look around there and see we've got an inward facing collection there. It's sort of a cross between Mr. Anderson and Agent Smith. And now we're ready to begin our export. So we're going to export off to the JavaScript. We'll go to there. And we're going to be exporting those planes, but we're also going to export the trackers themselves. So we'll just select all of the trackers, 
we're going to export them as a single comp. It'll be shared among them. We're going to give it a kind of arbitrary size. And we're going to anchor them at the bottom center. So the trackers are going to actually going to be anchored right in the middle there of the feed instead of the toe tip. And we'll see that in a minute. The other thing that we'll do here is we'll have the trackers facing the camera the entire time. Just to give you an idea of some of the different options and how they're going to come out looking at. And we can turn off our Cinema 4D integration. Now we're ready to go. After Effects is going to fire up here. And it's going to start out doing its initial render. So, you know, here we see our initial guys there, and those are all the exported planes. So if we were to play through, we would see those being the planes. We also have the trackers, and let's let's start out doing those also at this point. So we have a shared comp for them, and we're going to bring in, well, that was maybe, <laughs> that was maybe a little overkill. Uh, we bring in the image again. And we'll just scale that down to fit inside of there nicely. And now if we look back here, we should be seeing actually two copies of them. So we have both of our Guys, we've got a, the plain version and we've got the tracker version. And we, we could mess around to, to play with the scaling of the two of them, you know, however we like. And if we go over to the this camera a one 3D environment, you know, you'll see that all of these things are here in the 3D environment for us to be able to to work on inside the After Effects environment. So in each case we've got the, the row of uh, trackers here which are you know all being driven off of that shared comp and we have these planes which are just different instances of that image directly. So we can do whatever things we want inside of After Effects to work on those. One other thing I'll point out is there is this camera viewer comp also, if you're so inclined, that puts the 360 VR image into a sphere and lets you use a regular camera that you can move around to look in the different directions to see your 3D environment. And probably in due time, After Effects will be set up to do this nicer. But that, that comp is available as well. Now, if you look at the finer render of this, it's not the kind of stable insert that you normally as expect from a regular camera. There is some long-term drift to it that could be improved just by adding more trackers that extend through the entire length of the shot. But more significantly, you know, there's shorter term shiftiness in the shot that's due to both rolling shutter and also the optical flow-based stitching, which behaves a little bit differently on each frame. 
even with the fixed template stitching, which makes you more susceptible to seeing double images, you know, that solves that particular issue, but then you'll still see the rolling shutter. Even though the camera motion in this shot is fundamentally quite slow, the rolling shutter is a problem because the camera is handheld and there's plenty of higher frequency jitter to it. This is Insta360 Pro footage, which has six different lenses. And each of those lens fields is affected differently by the motion of the camera. So that's why you'll see all the different parts of the images moving around a little bit differently and, and kind of jelloing a little bit. The more images that you have, the more lenses that you have on the camera, the more different sections you have. So just to conclude on that, you know, if your camera doesn't have global shutter, you need to have an extremely stable camera platform. But ultimately, you know, global shutter would be a, a big win for a 360 VR camera if you're planning to let it move. Thanks for watching.